Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Specialist Automotive Software Tester. We are in chapter two still and working on the first topic that is Automotive Spice, where we have another topic to be discussed that is 2.1.2 requirements of the standard. As a part of the requirement of the standard, we will be discussing more on the different process and standards which generally we covered as a part of a SPICE, which is Automotive SPICE. Not only that, in the previous tutorial, we discussed about the different capability models and indicators which can be used to assess the progress of a particular methodology within an automotive industry. And here we will be understanding more from the point of same that what kind of specific processes can be applied from different parameters and indicators of the test process. So yes, ASPICE defines test process according to all process of the software and system development, which generally happens to be the same standard which we had uh, from the parameters of, of the previous tutorial, which helped us to understand that what kind of uh, generic parameters are available in order to assess the maturity of an organization. Thus, we do have a lot of process which can be helped with from the different point of view, like software engineering, software processes, and even the management process and so on. So here in this particular segment and from the point of syllabus, we are only talking about the standards which are covered in level one to three. Because one to three is only the scope where you can be evaluated based on your capability. Zero is incomplete and four and five are not in the scope right now. So from the point of one and three, one to three, the levels are being discussed here. For example, number one, the process software unit verification, that is SWE.4, requires static and dynamic testing. It assesses the component of the software based on this detailed design, which is again discussed in SWE, that is software engineering, point three. Next, the software integration test, SWE.5, assesses the integrated software based on the software architecture that is SWE.2. The software qualification test SWE.6 assesses the integrated software based on the software requirements SWE.1. The system integrated test SYS.4 assesses the integrated system based on the system architecture SYS.3. And the system qualification test that is SYS.5 assesses the integrated system based on system requirements SYS2. So this is just to understand that what are different parameters which can be covered. So there are different process categories and different dimensions. But what we have covered here is between level one to four. We do have level four and five, but that's not in the syllabus. But for your information, I've just included a particular link in the description if you want to understand all other standards and all other parameters of this uh, how exactly the ASPICE works for the level 4 and level 5 and what are these SC4, SC3, SWE2, 1 and all you can understand more about that detail. It's just that as part of the syllabus it is not discussed so we are not going to get into detail of that but yes I can provide you necessary information in order to know more about this. So if you want to know more about these different dimensions to be measured from the point of ASPICE, you can follow the description. You will find a link there. You can go to that document and understand more about it. So all the standards for all the levels are being explained in very detail there. <clears throat> uh, the next one here is assessment levels and capability indicators. Uh, what kind of indicators? Again, in the previous tutorial, we uh, got a little bit of understanding on this, that what kind of capability indicators are available uh, from the level 4, level 5 and so on. So here we are just trying to elaborate you more on the process attributes. So an assessor, which is generally the organization who assesses your capability of the process in order to determine what level do you stand at and accredit you according to that. So an assessor can assess the process capability via capability indicators, where ASPICE defines them for nine process attributes uh, which is going to be synonym as PA for the capability levels between one to three. Again, four and five is not in the automotive industry scope, thus we are not talking anything about that. Again, the document in the description can be telling you more about all other process attributes. So they are defined as follows, which you can have a look here. Process attribute 1.1 is process performance. The tester orients him or herself by means of the fundamental test process. 
The process attribute 2.1 is performance management. The tester plans, supervises, and controls the text activity, among other things. So you can stop feeling the difference between uh, the different practices and process attributes which we generally have. The process attribute 2.2, which is from the level 2 work product management, which is from the point of uh, managing the different work products which are being created as a part of the process. So the tester checks the quality of the test documentation, among other things. Process attribute 3.1 from the level 3, process definition. The person responsible for the test process defines a general project strategy, among other things. And PI 3.2, which is process attribute 3.2, process deployment. The tester applies the test strategy defined in the previous process attribute, that is 3.1. So generally, when you talk about assessing a particular process capability, we need to make sure that these activities are being performed and well established within your organization in order to uh, you know, assess the organization or reach that assessment level and give you that accreditation that you stand at level 2 or level 3 depending on the fulfillment. Again, repeating this, that this is between level 1 to 3 as per the syllabus scope. If you want something more, you can please refer to the description. you find a link there for the ASPICE document where you can find all the details as per the latest version. Well, nothing more. You definitely we have something more here that is assessment levels and capability indicators uh, further understood in more detail that what exactly, how do you measure them? And no matter you have the process attributes, you have the indicators which you're following, but still, how do I rate you? What kind of you know coverage or measurement uh, which I can showcase to the organization that how much you have actually met that? Because, for example, if I talk about one of the, one of the process attribute is uh, the work products. Now, work products can be maintained, but up to what quality have you achieved it? How well defined that is? How well detailed that is? So that's the most important thing. And we have different rating scales to be uh, measure different process attributes which we generally assess. So yes, for the process execution, for example, the process attributes, various process attributes, ASPICE defines two types of indicators. Generally, the base practice, which is BP, and the work products, WP. In addition, generic practices like GP and resources are defined. The assessment of the process attribute is based on the implementation level of the indicators in the four rating levels. So these are the four rating levels on which you can rate each process attribute related to the base practices and the work products being generated. So we generally have the standards as NPLF. N stands for none, which means not fulfilled, 0 to 15 percent. P is partially, which means partly uh, fulfilled between 15% to 50% and L is largely which means 50% to 85% and uh, F means fully which means fully fulfilled which is greater than 85% up to 100%. So for a process to reach a certain capability level the indicators of the capability level to be achieved must be either largely fulfilled uh, because if that is not fulfilled beyond 85%, you need to rework on your process to further improvise it, and then we will reassess your process in order to mark you with that particular level. The indicators of the lower capability levels must be fully fulfilled in order to get the same. So, yes, there are different criteria uh, when it comes to different levels. For example, you're talking about level 4 and level 5. Even largely fulfilled can be given with that uh, assessment report that you are accredited with level 4 or 5 when it comes to lower capabilities between uh, 1 to 3 you can have fully fulfilled that's a mandatory option there so yes this is this is what we wanted to understand as a part of it but this is not in complete depth because uh, we are talking about a certification program and we have a crisp syllabus to follow so don't you worry if you are not interested to get into the details of the uh, ASPIs that's fine but if you are curious to know more about it, you can definitely go through the link in the description and get more understanding about the same. Otherwise, whatever we are discussing is as per the syllabus, so you're not missing anything important to be read and prepared for the exam. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'll be there to address your queries and answer them well. 
Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.